Oh my god! Oh my god! Imagine a regular afternoon turning into a nightmare for the owner of Gage Park Jewelry Store. Around two in the afternoon, a fearless group of four robbers struck the store, armed and ready. What's really gutsy is that they pulled off this heist right in broad daylight. They didn't waste any time grabbing everything in sight, and within two minutes, they were making a quick getaway in a white sedan. <laughs> The owner, who had opened her doors just a year and a half ago, had taken precautions with automatic locks and multiple surveillance cameras inside and outside the store. However, the robbers managed to slip past a customer, leaving her shaken. Now, she's contemplating shutting down for good because of this audacious attack. On December 14, 2018, a group of robbers targeted Michael Jones Jewelers in Gold Street. They utilized a white BMW 1 Series to ram the shop's front, causing injuries to both a staff member and a customer. Subsequently, five masked men armed with hammers and machetes entered the store, smashing display cases and making off with high-value Rolex watches and diamond jewelry. They quickly fled down the pavement in a car that was later discovered burned out. A father and son, Elliot Burton and Connor Burton, face charges for their involvement in the gang responsible for this heist. Despite their denial of charges, a jury at Northampton Crown Court found them guilty. Investigations into other individuals suspected of playing a role in the robbery are ongoing. In the middle of the day, the police received a call about a robbery at a jewelry store in Norwich. Five robbers arrived on mopeds, smashing their way into the store with axes and hammers. They grabbed valuable items like they had a shopping list. After the daring heist, they made a quick getaway. But hold on, the story doesn't end there. The police, spurred by the distress call, sprang into action. Norfolk Police Emergency, go ahead. Quick, you need to come quickly, there's, there's a race. They're raising What's the What's going on? They're raising the jewelers now. Okay, stay on the line to me, stay on the line to me. Hurry, hurry, hurry. They're raising it now, they've got batons and everything. Is it, is, it, is it on London Street? Yes, you need to come okay. down quickly. Yeah, stay on the line, stay on the line to me. Quick, they're going, they're going! Right, they're going towards Gerald, they're going towards Gerald. Going towards Gerald, okay, stay on the line to me. They're going towards Gerald. There's about four motorbikes, four motorbikes going down now. Okay, they've so gone towards Gerald, did you say? They went, right, went towards Gerald, they went right. He has to be quick. They've gone. There's like four motorbikes. Very small motorbikes with a couple on the back of him. Yep. You need to come now. Picture this. Cops on the scene, dogs on the trail, and a helicopter in the sky. They were like a crime-fighting dream team. They managed to nab one of the robbers in the fields outside the city. That's a win, right? But the rest of the gang is still on the run. Here's a tough one. Around 6.30 this morning, a sneaker and streetwear store in San Pedro got hit hard in a devastating break-in. Surveillance cameras caught a group of men spending over 20 minutes in the store, cleaning it out of high-end goods, including off-white Virgils and valuable Jordans, totaling over $100,000. The thieves, no amateurs, made their getaway in a white BMW after thoroughly ransacking the business. And to make matters worse, this all went down just days after Black Friday, hitting even harder during the holiday season. Sneakers is my dream, you know, streetwear is my dream. The store had been through this before in 2019, leading to the installation of mirrored windows as a deterrent. The pandemic had already pushed the business toward an e-commerce only model with in-store pickup. Now, imagine the owner, wiping away tears, expressing the pain of seeing years of hard work shattered. We've been pushing that side of it, and now we just 
we don't know. We don't know what we're going to do. You know, we have to look at everything and see how we can recover. The future of the business hangs in the balance, leaving the owner and fellow business owners on the street to process the impact of this disrespectful act. This sneaker and streetwear store wasn't just a business, it was a part of the community, contributing to local events like Easter egg hunts and scholarships for UCLA students. It's uncomfortable, it's an uncomfortable feeling, for yeah. sure. To have nice things for people to come in and damage it like that, it's kind of disrespectful and lame. The heartbroken owner now faces the daunting task of recovering from this significant setback. A group of teens, aged 15 and 16, decided to go on a robbery spree, hitting up the Uptown Smoke and Vape Store in Dallas. Bold move, one of them strolls up to the counter, flashes his weapon, and demands cash. Here's the kicker. This group isn't new to the criminal game. Believe it or not, they'd hit the same shop just two weeks before this incident. Talk about repeat offenders. And as if that wasn't enough, in their rush to swipe merchandise, they even slammed a young woman to the ground. Very brash, very heinous, and very violent. And we believe they were responsible for many more. These teens aren't messing around. They're allegedly responsible for at least eight separate aggravated robberies in Dallas in just a single month. And get this, they've got a specific taste for hitting cigarette and tobacco smoke shops. What's even more concerning is that many of these crimes went down in broad daylight during the afternoons. But here's some good news. The Dallas Police Department's fugitive unit isn't having it. They've executed search and arrest warrants for all four teens involved, aiming to put an end to this crime spree we feel terribly for the victims of these crimes, and we feel terribly that they even occurred. That this community should be very proud of this police department for doing what they did, particularly in taking these individuals off the street uh, before they could continue uh, their crime spree, uh, and that could have at some point cost someone's life. Honestly, these kids are pulling off some serious heists, not the kind of stuff you expect from that age group. In a shocking incident of grand theft auto in Woodland Hills, a beautiful classic car worth six figures got swiped just weeks after its proud owner, Seth Wayne, got his hands on it. Picture this. A teal, even though he's got insurance, all he wants is to recover his cherished classic car. And honestly, who wouldn't? This woman is causing a scene in Walmart, trying to pull off some shoplifting shenanigans. And guess what? A random hero steps in to save the day. So, here's the play-by-play. -play. This woman grabs a bag and starts stuffing it with all sorts of merchandise, like it's some kind of shopping spree. And when she gets caught red-handed, what's her excuse? Well, she claims she's just trying the purse on. Who even tries a purse on by filling it with stuff from the store? The guy's not having any of it. Somebody? I couldn't find my friends. So. Oh, what else do you have in your purse? You, you might want to think about your decision right now. Right. Well, I'm not because I don't I don't work for I'm the store, so I don't have to follow Walmart's policy for shoplifting. All right, I'll hold you down on the ground until you take everything out of your purse. So why don't you go ahead and put everything out of your purse right now before I do something about it? Because I'm getting pretty sick of seeing shoplifters in here. Do you understand me? I don't blame you. I wasn't shoplifting. I wasn't. You got some ID store. on you? Why don't you go ahead and pull out your ID for me? I've already I'm already recording her right now. What's your name? Go ahead and pull out your ID for me. You, all you have is your social security card. Yeah. This is this is your name right here, huh? My kids. Your kids are your kids in the car. The store. You're what? I wasn't leaving the store. You're what? You weren't you? So you were just stuffing everything in your purse? No, I had it. I was trying out that purse. You were trying out that purse by stuffing all the merchandise and makeup in that purse. I was holding it. Huh? I you were holding, holding it for who? Who else are you here with? You're not here with anybody I'm else. So, so what are you doing here? He calls on the Walmart employees and tells them to get the manager involved. This woman bolts out of there like there's a marathon happening in the store. You're shoplifting, aren't no, you? I wasn't. You're shoplifting. Hey, can I get a manager? Can you call a manager? I got your social security card. You're gonna leave without your social security card? Hello? Hello? You have <laughs> this security guard's just doing his job, collecting some cash from Danville Spar in Pretoria West. He opens the back door of the money truck, and out of nowhere, four armed bandits show up, thinking they're in an action movie or something.
the driver spots them and quickly speeds away. Now, the poor security guard, just trying to make an honest living, gets the short end of the stick. These armed men tell him to hit the ground, and they quickly get away with an undisclosed amount of money. Thankfully, no one gets hurt in this wild scene. But these crooks, they're like ghosts right now, on the run, and no one's caught them yet. A guy was just doing his job, delivering a KFC order in Moston, North Manchester, on a regular Saturday afternoon. But out of nowhere, around 10 youngsters decided to turn his day upside down. They started throwing punches at his back and kicking his ankles, all while one of their pals swiped his phone. To make matters worse, they snagged his bike after he jumped off and tried to chase them down during the robbery. Sorry, can you can you call the police, please? Oh, Sorry, someone help! Someone help! Help! Someone help me! No! Someone come! Someone help me! No, he's got my phone! Please, someone help me! He's got my phone! No! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh Christ! Oh lord! Oh god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Stand up, mate! Stand up! Stand up! Oh god! Come on, stand up, mate! Stand up! Come on! Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on man! Come on! I've got a family. Why did they do that? I recorded everything. It's rough. Poor guy was just trying to make a living. There's this seemingly ordinary shopper, but turns out he's a bold thief with a thing for Target in North Hollywood. Well, he's hit this store 30 times in just a year. Here's the plate. He strolls through the store, looking like your average customer, tossing items into his cart like it's just another day. Looking through the store, you'd have no idea he was about to steal anything. It just looks like a normal customer uh, putting items in his cart. It's not till he gets to the rear door and he's He's out of the store within seconds. In one of the incidents, um, one of the target loss prevention overheard him talking about how he was recently discharged from the Marine Corps. So he may have just recently uh, left the military. It's only when he hits the rear door that he goes into action. Every time, he loads up on his loot and makes a beeline for the fire exit at the back, slipping out before security even knows what hit them. And to top it off, he's got an accomplice waiting in a getaway vehicle a sleek black Cadillac SRX with no plates. He's in the store for just a few minutes, so it's nothing's really changed over the course of the year. He's in the store maybe less than two to three minutes. He grabs the items, um, they're not security tagged, and he's out the fire door. And what's he after? High-end, high-demand stuff. Dyson vacuums, iRobot vacuums, Nest products, all worth a pretty penny, and he's smart only going for the items that aren't security tagged. I mean, 30 times? That's some serious commitment to the heist game. In a wild incident at Anthony & Company, a family-owned mall store, a gang of thieves went all out without a care in the world. No masks, no subtlety. They smashed into the store wielding hammers, breaking display cases, and snatching up whatever merchandise they could get their hands on. But here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. In the midst of this chaotic scene, one gutsy employee decided she wasn't going to be a victim. While dialing 911, she goes full superhero mode, launching a calculator at these audacious thieves. You're risking the people's lives. You're risking your own. Wake up. There's no easy way out. We all got to work for a living. You got to figure ways to make money. That's fine, but not that way. And I like to put up a fight, so, you know, I started throwing what I could um, while I was waiting for 911 to respond. She even threw it back when they retaliated. But here's the bummer. 
Despite this calculator-wielding resistance, those sneaky thieves made off with a cool $200,000 worth of stuff. It hit me, but I'm still alive. Two of them just left and then left one behind, and I got one last headshot for them. <laughs> Maybe later on you'll get married, have a wife. You think you're going to be proud of that? No. Go to college, learn a trade. Maybe these youngsters need to rethink their career choices, you know? Something that doesn't involve dodging calculators and family stores. These guys pulled off a heist at Element Armament in Whiteland, hitting it up at four in the morning. They were pros, knew exactly what they wanted, and started smashing cases to grab 33 weapons worth 30 grand. Cops showed up, but the burglars made a clean getaway. The vehicle crashed, um, person fled. We didn't get, uh, we weren't able to apprehend him, but we did get the vehicle and in the vehicle was a, a stolen It doesn't take long for them to travel around. Are they using it for themselves? Are they selling them to other people? You know, where are they going? Well, that's because we do know there's 30 some guns on the street right now that aren't supposed to be, and we don't know who has them. Definitely surprising her something like that happened in this area in Tracy Plaza. Luckily, one of the stolen weapons was found almost a day later when a Southport cop pulled over a car. They found a stolen weapon, but the suspect managed to bolt. These aren't good guys who took you know, so they took them for a reason. Now, what's that reason? And they're not afraid to use it. The fact that that's even a possibility um, to be in our neighborhood, to be in our park, to be in our school system is really scary. It's pretty scary that these dangerous crooks have their hands on a bunch of weapons, isn't it? A girl was trying to steal some books without anyone noticing. But hold on, a random guy enters the scene, not willing to let this slide. He calmly tells the girl to put the books back, or else he's dialing the cops. Faced with the prospect of law enforcement, she wisely decides to comply. Put all those books back and stuff. Huh? Were you guys gonna put all the books back? The binders and stuff? Do I need to call the cops or? I mean, I'm telling you guys, just put them back and walk out and I'll, I'll be all right with it. If that's the game you wanna play. No, I... you, you, you talk, you're just put them back. Put them down now. Take them out of your purse and put them down now. Why do you think it's okay to shoplift in here? Seriously, seriously, what makes you think that's okay? I don't understand. Tell me. Tell me, what makes you think that's okay? It's not okay. Do you think these people like working for minimum wage? What do you do for a living? What else do you have? You have more than that. That's all you have right there? Yeah. You can check my bag, that's all I have. Honestly. So you think it's okay to put that in your purse and walk out with it, why? I want, I want an explanation, right now. <laughs> why you think that's okay. I want you to take those items right there and hand them to that employee right there and say, I'm sorry, I tried to shop with these. Now. Ma'am, ma this, this girl has something she'd like to tell to you. I tried to stop 50, and I'm sorry. Okay. But she didn't get out the doors, so she's okay. Right, thank you. She didn't violate APO 9, so you're good to go. I want you to know that anytime you come in here, I'm going to be watching. Okay? Have a good day. <laughs> we definitely need more everyday heroes like this guy, keeping an eye out for mischief and putting a stop to it. A gang of sneaky thieves hit up a Hollywood jewelry store, swiping more than half a million bucks worth of bling over the weekend. These guys broke in through the roof and were being all tech savvy by disabling the alarm. The poor owner, Christopher, who's been in the jewelry game for over two decades, is totally bummed about it. But guess what? He had a secret camera that caught one of the bad guys in action. 509, they walked in my showroom, 513, they were out. Like literally four minutes, you know, they took over a half a million dollars worth of jewelry. Heart breaking, you know? Thieves are like the lowest of the low. Like those are scumbag people, you know? Like literally breaking the glass, stealing jewelry. CSI was there, we were there about six hours. We got fingerprints, we got DNA, we got your picture, we got everything, we're gonna find you. Christopher's hopeful that the cops will nab them soon thanks to fingerprints, DNA, and a pick. Fingers crossed these crooks get what they deserve.
A family found themselves in a tough spot after a fender bender, and things took a turn for the worse during what was supposed to be a simple resolution. The uncle, trying to settle things amicably, agreed to pay $700 because it was his nephew's fault. However, the situation quickly spiraled out of control when the other party changed their minds and demanded more cash. The disagreement turned violent, with one suspect going for the uncle's pocket and another using a metal pipe to strike him on the head. They, they hit him from the back. He was gonna give you, ¿cuánto dinero le va a dar? $700, but they didn't wait to, he gave it to them. The uncle ended up in the hospital, unable to work for two weeks. Despite their gratitude for surviving the ordeal, the family is pushing for justice. Sí, que está agradecido por estar vi por vivir. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When that happened, he thinks that he was gonna die. He wants to have like justice, you know, arrest them. The Houston Police Department is actively on the lookout for the three suspects who made a quick getaway in separate vehicles. Around 5:45 in the morning, High Kingdom on Lakewood Boulevard had a rude awakening courtesy of a burglary. A crew of 15 burglars decide to make a grand entrance by ramming what appears to be a government vehicle right into the store. They rush through the front of the business, all decked out in hoodies and masks, like a scene from a heist movie. It's a clean sweep. They wipe the store clean, grabbing whatever catches their eye. The owners left, estimating that at least 500 items vanished in the blink of an eye. Now that's a lot of people for a job like this. Let's hope the law catches up with this massive crew. Check this out. There's a Karen who waltzes into a bank, and you won't believe what she does next. She heads straight for the safe like she's on a mission. But guess what? The safe doesn't just swing open for her, and that's when things get wild. This Karen goes full-blown crazy mode, yelling, screaming, making a scene. She turns to this poor guy, probably just doing his job, and demands, open the safe. Why? Because she's broke, and she thinks the safe is her personal piggy bank. Time for Karen to switch up her game plan and consider something called a job, you know, the classic way to earn some dough. A crew of burglars pulls off a real-life heist straight out of a movie. They target this golden jewelry store south of Seattle, and they're not messing around. These guys cut a hole in the back of a safe like they're surgeons or something, snatching up a cool million in gold. This is the point of entry. It was 0.30 in the morning. Now, here's where it gets wild. They don't just stroll in the front door. These pros cut through the roof and walls, making it look like some Hollywood stuff. The owner walks in, opens the safe, and boom, her jaw hits the floor. A million bucks are gone. It's like something out of a suspense flick. Level of sophistication, this hasn't happened. The whole operation kicks off at 12.30 a.m. and rolls for a solid four hours. And get this, they're so slick that they use a tiny camera on a flexible scope to check out the alarm system. We just really want our customers' things back. If we could just get that, we'd be happy. We got this guy here, one, and then number two. Now, the cops are on the case, looking at footprints and doing their detective thing. But seriously, imagine if these guys put their brain power into legit work instead of this elaborate crime. In Auburn, a guy rolls up to a coffee stand in his truck, probably thinking he's got some slick plan. What's he trying? Zip tying the barista, but the barista isn't having any of it. She fights back and this wannabe crook bolts. Now, here's the sweet part. The whole thing's caught on camera. You see this guy's tattoo, get a good look at his face. Auburn Police Department, yep. She's obviously exchanging money, giving him back his change for his drink, and then trying to grab at her. It's absolutely terrifying, scary. When these things happen, you know, it puts you a little bit unnerving. So, they put it on social media, and bam, the community steps up big time. The community played an absolutely major role. They already found him and arrested him. Thank goodness, like, her instincts was to, like, pull away and do things like that. We are equipped with a lot of cameras um, for that reason, for safety. We have pepper spray in the shops. We have a panic button um, in here as well. All right, you guys have a great day. All right, thanks. You too. See you tomorrow. Bye. Phones start ringing off the hook at the Auburn Police Department with tips. And in just about 14 hours, they've got the guy in cuffs. Now, that's the kind of community teamwork that makes you feel good. Caught in the act and justice served.
There's this jewelry store in Ox. Crazy, like they doing Ocean Eleven on people out here. We're gonna support them because it's a shame. 25 years to get their business, uh, get their business going, and they were wiped out in a matter of two hours. The police find this X marked right on the spot they aimed for. It's like they had blueprints or something super planned out. And you've got the store owners looking crushed, dealing with insurance claims. This heist, it's like a masterclass in organized crime, don't you think? A crew of burglars had a late night encounter with a Tacoma pot shop at 3.28 a.m. No Subtlety here. They decide to make an entrance by ramming a car right into the store. They storm in, grab whatever they can get their hands on, and make a swift exit. I mean, these guys really turned on the speedometer for this one. Well, let's just hope the law catches up with their need for speed. This guy in the red shirt was trying to pull off a sneaky move by stashing stolen goods right into his trousers. But the employees caught this would-be shoplifting maestro in the act. Luckily, the employees swoop in, playing the role of the heroes, and snatch back those stolen goodies. I got you. I don't care what you are. This is about the third or fourth time It's a victory for the good guys and a not-so-great day for our pocket-sized shoplifter. Better luck next time, buddy. Imagine this. A guy, thinking he's on some kind of free shopping spree, starts grabbing stuff left and right without bothering to pay. But hold on. The security hero of the story steps in. Get off me, man. Get off me, man. Come on, man. No, that's not right. Come on, man. Go tell me. Let that go, homie. I'm going to tell you, man. Here, take this. I'm telling you, man. Take this. Yeah, take this shit, man. Get in the first place. I know, I know. Let go of me. Hey, let's go. Yeah, this, this. Here, here. One time. Hey, the fucking cake, man. What do you do? Yeah, I'm hungry, man. Yeah, take this fucking cake, man. Doing, homie. Open. Yeah, man. Yeah, take this open, shit, open, homie. Let me open it for you. Open it, man. Open. Jesus Christ. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You don't do that, man. All right, man. Yeah. Open. Yeah. open. Yeah. Yeah. Rip your shit open, homie. Yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. 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 Hey, what's the no reals? This man really made sure the stolen goods find their way back to where they belong. A regular guy's just minding his own business outside a local butchery in President Paul Kruger Street in Poliquain. But oh no. Out of nowhere, six masked individuals appear on the scene. Before our poor guy knows it, he's in a bit of a tight spot. One of these masked men grabs him around the neck. They're not here for a friendly chat though. They want his wallet, cell phone, and anything else valuable he's got. After a quick search, they toss him to the ground and casually stroll away, leaving the poor guy bewildered and probably a bit bruised. Life's tough when unexpected villains decide to shake things up in your day. Imagine this. On a regular day at the store, shoppers are going about their business, and suddenly, the spotlight shifts to one woman causing a ruckus. Why? Because she got caught red-handed, attempting a not-so-stealthy act of shoplifting. When confronted by the security guard and asked to do the right thing, pay for what she tried to snag without paying. 
Instead of calmly settling the matter, she unleashes a theatrical performance. Picture this, tears flowing, loud yelling, and some unexpected acrobatics, maybe even a dramatic jump or two. It's a head scratcher. Why resort to such theatrics when a simple payment could make the problem disappear? In a bold armed robbery near Cape Town International Airport on June 4, 2019, two perpetrators arrived in a Corsabaki. The incident unfolded as they approached an employee's vehicle. Swiftly jumping out, they brandished a weapon to intimidate the security guards present. Their target was an item stored in the vehicle's trunk, which they successfully stole. Following the heist, the criminals quickly fled the scene, leaving authorities to investigate the daring and well-executed robbery in airport industria. In a daring series of smash-and-grab robberies, a gang of six men decided to target not one, but two Apple stores in Perth, and they made off with a whopping $300,000 worth of goods. First, they hit the city store at 2.17 a.m., but their grand plans got a little messed up by a taxi driver who happened to be around, forcing them to flee empty-handed. But guess what? These guys didn't give up. Just over half an hour later, they struck again at the Garden City Boragoon store, and this time, they succeeded in scoring a significant amount of merchandise. Now, these weren't your average smash-and-grabbers. They were armed and even threatened the security staff during their raids. The police brought in forensic teams to investigate the crime scenes, and the cleanup process began. I can get what I need done. They're doing the best they can to bring it out, but I have to stay outside of the store. As a consequence of the Ram raid, the Apple City store had to temporarily close for repairs, causing inconvenience to waiting customers. But here's the kicker. Those stolen high-tech devices might not be worth much to the thieves. Why? Because Apple can remotely disable the stolen phones, making them completely useless. They can even identify the stolen devices and implement security measures to diminish their value. However, there's a concern that these cunning thieves might still try to sell the stolen components on the black market. Manufacturer know what phones have been stolen and security measures will be enabled, meaning that these telephones are useless. That have reduced value maybe as spares on the black market, so it would be possible to take these devices, pull them apart, and there would be useful components within these devices that could then be used in the repair market. By buying this black market products, you're ultimately causing these burglaries to occur. As you can imagine, the police are actively on the case, following leads, and they've even found two burnt-out cars in the southern suburbs that they believe are connected to these robberies. Let's hope these crooks end up behind bars where they belong. At a Target superstore in Miramar, there's this woman who decides she's not going to bother with pesky things like paying for her stuff. Nope, she walks right out of the store with a cart full of products, and when a brave loss prevention officer confronts her, what does she do? She's got a smile on her face, and the two start wrestling for control over the cart filled with unpaid electronics. I'm very determined by the video. These people are making a living at doing this. The worker, not having any other option, decides to topple the cart. But hold on, the drama doesn't end there. He notices a second shoplifter trying to snatch another basket of goods. The first woman even tussles with the worker to get him to back off. Working for Target, it was more about deterring, so I mean, like, it's hard to be everywhere at right, the same right. time. My reaction is shocking. It's uh, that it happens this frequently in my neighborhood. Guess what these female thieves were after? Some high-priced camera equipment. And if that wasn't enough, one of them decides to make a return visit just a few days later and pulls off the same trick again, loading up a cart full of more electronics. But this time she's flying solo, casually bypassing the register once more. I think anybody's capable these days. This woman, pushing the cart out of the store, keeps a watchful eye for any approaching trouble. But you know what? She makes a clean getaway to a waiting car. 
where a man hops out and helps load up all the stolen goods. In and out in just four minutes, and she takes off with a cool $3,200 worth of merchandise. Looks like she's got quite the knack for this, doesn't she? A group of guys in their 20s stroll into the Apple Store at South Coast Plaza on a Monday night, around 9 o'clock. They start ripping iPads and phones right off the tables. No weapons. Just sheer audacity. But guess what? An off-duty police officer, minding his own business in the store, decides he's not having any of it. He steps in, and there's a scuffle with the robbers. But unfortunately, they manage to take him down. I don't understand how you could just swipe $30,000 dollars worth of iPhones or anything because there's so many people in the store and you assume there's so many employees. It's surprising that they were able to, to pull something like that off. I, mean, I don't know how they would get away with that though because that's that seems kind of difficult to do especially from the Apple store with so many people around. You kind of have to watch it back everywhere you go it doesn't matter how safe whether you come here or go to other malls you always have to watch it back. Tough break the customers barely had any time to react because this whole thing went down so fast. In the blink of an eye, these guys make off with a whopping $30,000 worth of Apple products. A gang of thieves decides to make a grand entrance by ramming an SUV right through the front door of a weapons store in central Indiana. Now, you'd expect them to go on a shopping spree for expensive weapons, right? Well, surprise twist. The owners were one step ahead and had already locked the really pricey stuff in a safe. So, these masked suspects are in and out in a lightning-fast 30 seconds, probably realizing their haul isn't as impressive as they hoped. Why? Because the police showed up just in the nick of time. The crooks managed to grab three weapons on their way out, but thanks to the safe, they missed out on the big score. Lucky break for the owners that the police arrived, but it's a bummer these crooks slipped away. Picture this. Two guys stroll into a store in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, thinking they can intimidate the staff. One of them, feeling tough with a machete, tries to throw around some threats. But wait, the clerk isn't having it. What does he do? Pulls out a sword. The would-be troublemakers see this unexpected turn of events and decide it's time to make a swift exit. Use this one when I see him with a sword to make him afraid. The clerk, probably channeling some inner warrior vibes, be like, finally, a worthy opponent. Lesson learned, don't mess with a store that's got its own sword-wielding defender. This woman thinks she can just stuff her bag with a bunch of items and stroll out like it's no big deal. But hold on, the store employees and some alert bystanders aren't having any of it. They step up, catch her in the act, and put an end to her shoplifting shenanigans. I'm just trying to take what's mine. Right? I'm going to give it to you. I ain't asked already. She won't let go. No, keep opening it up. Open, dump everything out. I am. Let me dump it out. I'm going to dump it out for you. No, right? no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right, you can pick it back up after it's on the floor. Just let me open it. I'm standing here right here. I'm going to show you. Let me go. You're hurting my finger. You're going to break my finger. No, no, you're scaling, hey. so you wanna let go, I'm or... gonna open it for you! Yo, just let her open it. Let me open just it! Let open it. Me. Gonna just let her open it. You're gonna talk about it now. You know that, right? Oh my god. Oh my god, what the hell? You serious right now? You serious right now? Wow. Are you serious? Okay, you're young, okay? No, no, no. Aba, aba, tutuka! You resist? Wow, that's unbelievable. 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 Kudos to those quick-thinking folks for making sure honesty prevails. Here's a wild one for you. A guy tries to surprise a gas station clerk, but guess who ends up surprised? Aaron Jacobs, the clerk, is no ordinary guy. He's a former Marine combat instructor and a black belt in karate. So, when two guys roll into the gas station and one of them pulls out a 12-inch blade, they pick the wrong target. Jacobs, the karate whiz, not only knocks the knife away, but also gives the attacker a face-first introduction to a rack. Then started to move my direction, which I didn't actually really notice till I kind of turned around and he was standing right behind me. 
And, uh, and then that's when I saw a 12 inch blade coming my way and uh, I didn't know what his intentions were. I wasn't about to ask. Fortunately, uh, I was able to knock the knife out of his hand and uh, get him subdue him in an arm, arm bar submission and in which I ran him face first into the rack over there. The store was in pretty bad shape afterwards. The whole, the cigar rack got knocked over, which I was worried about that during the time. <laughs> and then the chips rack exploded. I'm thinking, oh no, not the chips rack. These jerks definitely got more than they bargained for. Picture this, a brazen attempt at retail thievery in Walmart, starring none other than a character we'll fondly call Karen. This audacious individual thought she could waltz out with a cart full of unpaid merchandise. But hold on, the vigilant Walmart staff wasn't about to let this caper slide. As soon as Karen got caught, the theatrics began. Out came the yelling, the outrage, and of course, the victim card. Welcome to the problem! <laughs> Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Welcome! Uh, Merry Mother uh, Christmas! You will never know what it's like to be a brown person in this society ever! No, you would not love it because it's terrible! It's just awful! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What do I need to do to make my point be heard without breaking the law? What do I need to do? You tell me! Tell me! What do I do with my life? What do I got to do with any of this? What do I got to do with this? I am proud! I am broken! I am automatically guilty! I'll go ahead around. So what the f am I supposed to do? And I've got to Louis Rosales, a 31-year-old, thinks he's got an easy heist at a Los Angeles hotel. He strolls in, casually asks about room rates, then pulls out a loaded weapon, demanding cash from the clerk. Now, enter the unexpected heroes, two martial arts experts coincidentally there for a tournament. The elevator opens, they spot the situation, and decide it's time to showcase their skills. A swift leg sweep later, they disarmed and subdued Mr. Rosales. These good Samaritans held their ground until the police arrived. Maybe this unexpected encounter gave them the perfect warm-up for their upcoming martial arts competition. Here's a story that unfolds like a scene from an action movie, a break-in at Go Gas and Food in Oakland. Armed with a crowbar and a weapon, a group of suspects made their move, leaving witnesses stunned. Jibril, the owner, didn't waste a moment. He received an alert from the alarm company, rushed to the scene, and even tried to block the suspect's escape with his truck. But here's where it takes a frustrating turn. Jibril faced a struggle reaching emergency services, encountering busy signals twice before finally getting through. Despite his courageous efforts, the suspects, described as just kids by witnesses, managed to get away with about $3,000 in cash and items, leaving behind roughly $20,000 in damages. To, to the mayor of Oakland, we need help. Oakland right now, if it stay like this, it's going to be a bankruptcy city, nobody going to live in it. Well, it's going to be a ghost town. Now, this isn't Jibril's first rodeo. He experienced a burglary at his other gas station in East Oakland in October, leading to over $137,000 in losses and damages. Frustrated and feeling let down by public safety, Jabril is considering taking matters into his own hands, underscoring the urgent need for better security and community support. We're legally armed in here, and I have to protect myself and my business. If the law cannot stand for me, I'll stand for myself. Who can blame him for losing confidence after having to fend off burglars? It's a tough situation. In a disheartening incident, the well-known Puerto Rican chef, Marcel Hernandez, experienced a purse theft during a night out in Miami. The surveillance footage captures the swift moment when a woman casually walks by, slipping Marisol's black Gucci purse off the back of her chair in a matter of seconds. Marisol, expressing her frustration, highlighted the emotional toll of losing personal belongings. The stolen purse contained significant items, including a wallet with credit cards, $1,200 in cash, 
and a pair of Cartier glasses valued at nearly $4,000. My things, you know, uh, they are material stuff, but they still are yours. You feel frustrated. The person did went uh, shopping that night, and they had fun with my money and my credit card. The ordeal took a more distressing turn as the thief indulged in a shopping spree that night, racking up credit card purchases totaling about $1,800. Marisol attempted to leverage technology to track her stolen belongings using an air tag. This is something that happens more often than we think. Women go to uh, places, they put their purses on the chair thinking it's there, it's safe, you know, I can feel somebody uh, reaches for it. And it really doesn't happen that way. It was in an apartment building that it was pinning. In order for us to go into an apartment building and knock door by door, we would have to get a court order. There's certain procedures that we got to do in order to do this. However, despite the tracking information pointing to an apartment building, the police faced legal challenges in pursuing the suspect. I know I cannot have my things back. I really don't want them. Uh, money is money. Uh, credit cards are credit cards. It will be uh, solved. But I really want justice. Obtaining a court order and following specific procedures were deemed necessary for further investigation. Picture this, a Karen gets caught red-handed stealing money, but instead of owning up to her actions, she decides to play the victim card. With an air of innocence, she acts like she didn't do anything wrong. Matter, you, just, you don't take someone's stuff. You don't see a backpack and take someone's stuff. No, you don't, you don't take, you don't, no, no, you took, you went into someone's backpack and took money out of it. What's your name? No, you don't have to be an honest person for once. You can't just go into someone's backpack. Did you say sorry? I'm not telling you my name. Why? I'm not saying you just stole my money. Yeah, you can't do that. No, 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 no. You're still a scum person for stealing. You just got caught. What if we didn't catch you? What if we're two minutes later? What did you do? Walk away with it? No, you can't just take go into someone's backpack and take their cash. No, you you gave you admitted that you took his cash. You can't just take someone's cash and walk away and expect nothing to happen. Like we're not going to do anything, but you can at least tell the camera your name. Grow up. You took our cash. You took the money and tried leaving. No, yeah, you're a scum. Like you you're worthless. I don't know why someone would why you take someone else's money. Watch your stuff. She just went into our bags and won't even say sorry. Without bothering to argue any further, she simply decides to walk away, leaving everyone else in disbelief. It was just a regular stop for off-duty Mansfield firefighter Daniel Gasky at a Midlothian convenience store, but little did he know he was about to face a knife-wielding 19-year-old. The suspect barged in, threatening the cashier and demanding money. It was me at first, you know, just I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Well, I stepped back and realized what was going on real quick. In a split-second decision, Gasky, drawing from his Marine training, took control of the situation. He managed to disarm the young robber and held him down until the police swooped in. I'm going to maintain control of the weapon, but if I miss the weapon, I'm going to be so far or so close to his back that he won't be able to maneuver his arm around to wound me, you know, in the process. After I had the knife away from him and I was holding him down, um, I was able to talk to him very calmly. A true display of courage and quick thinking, Gasky, emphasizing the importance of staying calm in such situations, shared his experience and even expressed hope that the young suspect, Dylan Bearden, would use this incident as a turning point in his life. I'm not. I, I like to think that anyone else in that situation would have been able to assess and done the right thing too. Sometimes doing what's right involves getting a license plate number of somebody driving away. I saw the video for the first time this morning. I went, this wasn't just, hey, I'm holding until the police so I can get here. He intervened and made a difference in someone's life. Now that's a hero with a heart. Kudos to Gasky for his bravery and compassion. Picture this. A group of robbers thinking they could prey on Argentinian tourists near the iconic Lombard Street in San Francisco. But hold on, they didn't account for the armed cops in plain clothes who happened to be in the right place at the right time. The tables turned quickly for these would-be tough guys as they found themselves arrested on the spot. Now facing multiple charges, 
these thwarted criminals must be rethinking their grand plans. A gang of four guys pulled off a heist at a gas station down south in England. What's their grand entrance? Ramming their Range Rover right into the store, like they're in some blockbuster flick. They swoop in, grab whatever catches their eye, and before you know it, they're peeling out of there. But here's the kicker, this isn't their first rodeo. These guys have been pulling off heists left and right, hitting up places in Dorset, Buckinghamshire, Surrey, Hampshire, and Berkshire. Now, the cops are on the hunt for these wannabe Hollywood heist masters. Let's hope the long arm of the law catches up with them and they end up cooling their heels behind bars. So here's the lowdown on these two girls who seem like your regular shoppers. They're actually on a shoplifting mission, trying to be all sneaky and sly. They scan the area, making sure no one's clocking their moves. One of them snags an item and does the whole coat concealment trick. But wait, there's more. Her partner in crime follows suit like they're playing a stealthy game of catch. Little did these would-be thieves know, the watchful eyes of security cameras were on their every move. Smooth move, but not smooth enough to escape the watchful lens. Can you believe it? This woman got caught red-handed stealing, and instead of owning up to it, she calls the cops and spins a whole web of lies. She claims that the people who caught her are threatening her, trying to play the victim. Lies on top of lies. Lady just stole my charger and won't give it back. She's saying that I have to prove that it's mine and she's calling the cops on me right now. But they're gonna beat me. She said we're gonna beat her? Yeah, in the central park. She's lying. You know that's illegal now, right? They're so close to me and they're already touching me. That's not your property. That's mine. Yeah, so give it back. It's not yours. You have to prove it. I'm not saying I'm not gonna give it to you. You have to prove that this is yours. You know, what are you talking Ma'am, they don't let me. There are two girls and they're surrounding me and they're threatening me that they're gonna beat me or something. Do or something. You're lying. You're a liar. That's on 170 something. That's in front of the queues of the information. Are you racist They don't let something? me to go. Yes, I am. I prefer my race to any race. What's your problem? Find something. Okay. I find something in the middle of the What's the problem? Actually. These two kids have come and said that this is theirs. I think that's it. I'm gonna break it and hear me on a I'm gonna beat it and you're not gonna be that happy. Your highness should come down. Please do not take my property. I'm gonna destroy the neighbors. Maybe something you haven't paid for it. Your daddy paid for it. Or your system paid for it. Maybe I'm not gonna get it. Do not discuss with you. What? Do not discuss with me. Why steal in the first place if you have to weave such a web of deception? A bunch of wannabe masterminds decided to go all fast and furious on a post office in Birmingham. So, they pull off this grand entrance using a stolen vehicle. They smash their way in, whip out some straps, and go full on mission. Impossible dragging the cash machine with them. But hold on, here comes the plot twist. The cops crash the party. Panic ensues. They ditch the machine and make a run for it. Now, thinking they're the Ocean's Eleven of the real world, they decide to hit up a bingo hall next. And guess what? They try their luck at a liquor store too. But guess who had the last laugh? Yep, the police. They track them down and put an end to their robbery spree. Calm down! 
Chad, release your hands and we'll put you in handcuffs. Ain't coming in no car, we use like. Get me a van, I wanna go in a van, simple. I got COVID-19, don't make me be sick on you now, bruv. <sighs> don't do it, innit? Two meters, call me a f***ing van now. It's a regular Monday afternoon at Estates Consignments in Pleasant Hill. A group of would-be robbers thinks they've got it all planned out, but little did they know, they were about to face an unexpected hero, 73-year-old Albert Marcus, armed and ready. So, our vigilant employee, Marcus, spots a suspicious woman doing some shady business in the store, acting all sneaky near the exit. He catches on, she's up to no good, chatting away with an accomplice outside. Suddenly, the whole gang barges in, armed with a sledgehammer, ready to wreak havoc. But wait for it. Marcus isn't having any of it. He dashes to the jewelry section, whips out his trusty weapon, and gives these intruders the surprise of their lives. He shows them the weapon, lays down the law, and guess what happens? Panic sets in, and the robbers hightail it out of there. And because they saw my gun, and I was, you know, serious about it. They panic, and they run out. They threaten my life or my life of the employees. I would use the 100%. I didn't want to shoot anybody, right? But I have to make a statement. Too many bad things happened. Stores get robbed left and right. Now, here's where it gets even more interesting. These bad guys, thinking they can make a clean getaway, jump into two stolen Infiniti Q50 SES, one white, one black. But Karma has other plans. The Pleasant Hill Police, thanks to some nifty license plate reader technology, get wind of the stolen white Infiniti. I have a message for all the business owners to take example and fight for themselves, because if you don't fight for yourself, nobody will. A police cruiser rolls in, ready to nab these crooks. But, plot twist, the robbers manage to escape the police clutches and speed off into the distance. Imagine this, a regular guy, just strolling down the street, lost in his own thoughts. But wait, out of nowhere, two shady characters pop up like they own the place. In a blink and you'll miss it moment, these two snatch the poor guy's backpack and vanish into thin air. The entire mugging operation wraps up in a jaw-dropping 20 seconds. A bold crew of masked men executed a meticulously planned heist in the dead of night. Their target? A store adorned with luxury watches, including coveted brands like Rolex, Audemars Piguet, and Patek Philippe. No messing around, they went straight for the window, smashed in, and bingo, they were in. They grabbed the high-end watches and then vanished into the darkness.
Now, it's up to the authorities to play detective and nab these daring thieves. Let's hope they get caught and justice prevails. A guy was casually strolling through Hillbrow, minding his own business. Suddenly, out of the shadows, a gang of robbers pounces on him, taking him down and snatching his belongings. Now, here's the silver lining. The good guys, aka the police, cracked the case, identified those culprits, and threw them behind bars. In March 2022, a crew of five men pulled off a daring heist in broad daylight at a jewelry store in Birmingham. Their modus operandi? They rammed a vehicle into the store, creating chaos. Four of them, armed with sledgehammers, swiftly smashed the display cases, grabbing jewelry and stuffing their bags. Meanwhile, the fifth member played the role of crowd control, brandishing an axe to intimidate witnesses. Please Google or not? Have you called the police? Someone called him. I'm gonna video. We need to get the reg. Can anyone get the reg there? Get the reg of the car. Get the reg quick. Did you get the wrench of that? Yeah. Their escape was just as swift as their entry. They fled in the truck they arrived in, abandoning it less than half a mile away. The switch to an Audi allowed them to speed off with their loot, which amounted to a staggering 300,000 pounds. The audacious ringleader, John Gourlay, was later spotted selling a stolen bangle for 1,500 pounds in the jewelry quarter just two hours after the heist. This criminal crew didn't escape justice though. Following a four-week trial at Birmingham Crown Court, all five men were found guilty of conspiracy to rob and possessing an offensive weapon. Two armed guys think they're pulling off a smooth hijacking at a house. Little did they know, the driver of the Range Rover they targeted had a surprise for them, his own weapon. You see? It's, 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 that was your shot. It's my, yeah. That's your oh, shot. that was your shot. Oh. Yeah. And then go on and go off. Ah, I fell down and go off. Hey, kill him, my girl. Oh, that was you. Yeah, oh. yeah. For that other one. Oh, none of us. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I went it again. Yeah. The tables turned real quick as the armed driver scared the living daylights out of them, and they ended up scrambling out of there. Imagine this scene, a group of armed guys cruising the highway on the lookout for their next target. They spot a car, force the driver to pull over on the N2 highway, and proceed to rob everyone inside. Unfortunately for the people in the car, their journey took an unexpected and dangerous turn. Oh, wait, they're bringing out the gun. Just no, go, no. just go, just go. Just, just go. 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 Just go
Stay vigilant and stay safe on the roads, everyone. A guy is peacefully minding his business in his store when three troublemakers walk in with the intention to steal. Things take a surprising turn when one of them tries to jump the counter, but the smart store owner isn't having it. He quickly pulls out a knife and then grabs a bat, freaking out the would-be thieves who promptly run away. Kudos to the owner for quick thinking and putting a stop to a potential robbery. It's a reminder that sometimes the unexpected can be the best deterrent. In an intense scene, two individuals attempted to make off with carts filled with stolen merchandise, but a courageous employee decided she wasn't having it. She swung into action, literally, hitting one of the women on the head with something. The other tried to escape, but this fearless employee caught up to her and delivered a full-blown hit. Well, in the face of theft, this employee showed some serious bravery. These two girls thought they could sneak away with stolen candies, but they picked the wrong store. The vigilant employee caught them in the act demanding they empty their bag and return the stolen items. There's nothing in here, this part. Wherever it is, let's take it out. In your pocket, in your jacket, and don't leave anything in your pocket, okay? Wherever you put it, you know I'm you took it. I'm showing you my pocket. Okay. So you're telling me you took almost seven, eight pieces of candy and you just didn't get any of them? I didn't, I was it back. I why would you, why money, would you take 11 pieces of candy and ask me the different prices and not take anything? I'm not stupid. Because Come I on. Thought she had the no, money she doesn't have the money. She only had two dollars. Okay. That's, that's why my she was. Ex she was directing me. She got two dollars. She gave it to me, okay. and she thought that I wasn't looking. This is in my pocket. There's nothing. In okay, my I pocket. can call the cops on you. They can search you because I'm not touching you. So okay. take everything off. Are you already embarrassed? Okay. okay. I don't want to embarrass you more. So whatever you have in your bag, please take it out. Have this. Okay. Here, here. Put it here. Put it right here. Okay. Okay. You sure that's all I? Yes. Let me op open your bag now. I want to make a video. I gotta show it to my boss. For what? That's all I have. I have my books. I mean, you can't give me attitude because I just saw, saw you stealing. Okay, I'm not. Can, can I look inside the bag, please? No, you're not. Cause I have okay, okay, okay take it out. No, they take everything out. You got more than that. You got you, you got the lifesavers too. Come on, hurry up. I, I can hear it. Okay. Nobody's leaving until I get my stuff. See, look. Okay, there you go. That's all of it? I saw it in the back. Take that out too. I'm getting it. Can I move my other stuff? Damn. Let's take a look. Look at this. Okay. 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 I know you have more. I don't. You sure? I'm positive. Look. I'm not touching your bag. Okay, I'm touching your bag. Okay, put your hand inside. Okay. I want to hear it. Okay. okay. So now you and you, please never come in store, okay? I'm being very nice to you. I'm not calling the cops. You're banned for life. Thank you. Don't send any of your friends here, okay? okay. If, if it's a mistake, no, it's not a mistake. Because you can't mistakenly just take one candy. You took almost $15 worth of stuff. Okay. Have a nice day, okay? And please, I don't want to see you again. Looks like this employee knows how to keep things sweet and justly handled. Two guys decided to go all out and ram raided a shop in Scarborough with their vehicle. Once inside, they were on a mission, grabbing cigarettes and alcohol like there was no tomorrow. But, as luck would have it, our trusty officers were patrolling nearby. 
They spotted the duo loading their car with the ill-gotten goods. Thinking on their feet, the officers used a taser to take down the suspects as they tried to make a run for it. The bad news for these guys? They got slapped with burglary charges and a one-way ticket to police custody. Here's the scoop on a wild night of crime. First up, around 3.38 a.m., three bold individuals decided to make an entrance, literally. They smashed a dark-colored Toyota Hilux through the doors of the Repco store on Athlon Drive Greenway. If that wasn't audacious enough, at 4.10 a.m., another duo tried their luck by using a small hatchback SUV to force entry into Domino's Pizza in Weston. Now, here's the twist. The police smell a connection between these two incidents. They're on the hunt to nab these guys and bring them to justice. In a peculiar incident in Birmingham, a crafty thief, Abdelhadi Bahu Jabur, made headlines for his unique approach to stealing Rolex watches. CCTV footage captured him approaching a couple in Colmore Row, engaging in banter and high fives. Bahu Jabur then showcased his nimble dance moves cleverly distracting the woman as he effortlessly removed her 9,000 pounds Rolex. Attempting the same trick on the man, he failed, snagging the watch on the shirt cuff. Undeterred, he later targeted another woman in St. Philip's Cathedral grounds, singing It's Coming Home, before forcibly taking her 4,700 pounds Rolex after a struggle. PC Matt Evans, a seasoned officer, launched an investigation revealing a clear image of the offender through extensive CCTV analysis. Bahu Jabour's mobile phone tied him to associates Abdul Boychala and Hussein Ehab from Nottingham, who had previously used similar tactics. Arrested and charged with two robberies and an attempted robbery, Bahu Jabour refused to disclose the whereabouts of the stolen watches. He admitted guilt in court and is set for sentencing on October 6th. A woman decides to go on a shopping spree in Walmart, filling her cart with a bunch of items. However, when she spots Walmart employees, she abandons the cart and casually strolls out of the store. This lady, she got caught trying to steal these items and stuff. They caught her twice. Then she tried to steal and go out the back door. She was back here when I was getting like fabric and stuff. Yeah. Didn't you catch her outside already? No, she, she, she was already outside when I came in the she door. Went to the stock room. <laughs> <laughs> to go to I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm terrible. I'm telling her to get a job and pay for it. <laughs> oh my. Oh, that was hilarious. Good. Like this is the stuff right here. Yo, that's crazy. The big question here is, why would you load up a cart with items if you have no intention of buying them? It's a head scratcher. Check out these two individuals who stroll into a liquor store with a plan. They start loading up their basket with merchandise. One of them makes a quick exit after grabbing some items, but the other isn't in a rush. He takes his time, grabs more stuff, and casually walks out. Quite the smooth operation, huh? These two folks thought they could help themselves to parts from someone's car, but the owner's friends weren't having it. A heated argument ensued as both parties faced off. But he told me that I can yeah. have it. You don't really? touch someone's hey, 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 hey. didn't touch the car. Yes, I, we literally have it on video. We didn't move. We've been here talking the she whole time. Did. Look at the video. She really? did. Look at, look at me. We were She's all sitting standing here. We were sitting here. We literally there. watched her tugging on it. Yeah, I asked Manny for that before he sold it to no, me. No, he didn't. Matter. It's on her car. Yeah. It's her no, property he didn't. now. Okay, first off. First off. First you off, are not no, part of this. No. We're gonna so, we so got a weapon. Oh, he got a weapon. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? Okay, okay. what the f*** are you, you going to do? Stop. 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 Okay. So tough, guys. Not your car. It is not your car to f***ing touch with either. That's fine. We can talk. No, tell me he would have talked. If she bought it and it's her property, that means you don't touch it. If you didn't take off, then it's That's not yours anymore. not your place. 
place. Right, it's not your place. Here. And especially not yours to come up with a f***ing whatever the f*** that was. Some f***ing tough guy. Okay, first Go off. off. I'm scream at my woman. Or what? You're going to f***ing hit me? What the f*** are you yeah, going to do? Bring out that f***ing weapon? Please. First of all, there's more men here than women. And? You came up to the women with a metal bar. So you know what, actually, I walked up to the I, I do. Kind of You're done, Blondie? Really? It's a f***ing wig. No, go for it. You saw me. For all I know, you're all carrying a gun. I don't know you were done. And our leggings? And in our court purses? For all I know. That was in my court purse! That was f***ing Lesson learned. Don't mess with other people's things without permission. Imagine this scene unfolding in broad daylight. Four masked individuals, armed and determined, shatter their way into A1 Jewelers in Cheatham Hill, Manchester. The clock ticks 10 a.m. and the store is just opening, with employee Zishan Khalid caught in the chaos. Inside, chaos ensues as the robbers wield weapons, smashing display counters, and swiftly filling their bags with valuable jewelry. Meanwhile, outside, a fifth accomplice brandishes a machete, dissuading anyone from intervening. Amidst the frenzy, one bold move changes the narrative. Store manager Mr. Khalid, standing his ground, hurls a computer chair at a would-be thief attempting to breach the back office. Their haul, 47 rings and 16 three-piece necklace and earring sets, all precious 22 karat gold one-of-a-kind pieces, all in less than a minute, a daring heist that left its mark. A gang of thieves decides to go all in on a shopping center heist. They roll up in their 4x4, smash right into the cash machine, and then tie it up with straps and try to make a run for it, dragging the loot behind them like it's some trailer. But guess what? Lady Luck wasn't on their side this time. The cops got wind of their little stunt and swooped in faster. They caught these would-be bandits red-handed and put an end to their getaway plan. Here's a classic move, a woman trying to sneak out of a family business with a bag full of goodies. When she's nabbed, her brilliant defense is, oh, I was totally planning to pay for it. Smooth, right? Well, not smooth enough. Why are you fighting like a thief? No, I'm not! We caught you stealing from a family business, you thief! Put your mask on, thief! Don't Put your mask on! Don't do that! You don't do that! Don't do that! You ain't going anywhere! You ain't going anywhere, thief! Uh, not that I can see, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm crying out because you're caught! You're on probation, aren't you? No, I'm not! So what are you so upset about? I think it's a war for Yes, sir? No, I was going to pay for it! My God! See? She yeah. might have more merchandise in her bag. Make yeah, sure the cops check her bag for more merchandise. I'm going to pay for it! No, you're not. Yes, I am! I have my coupons. So you're going to sit on here. Maybe next time, she'll try the old-fashioned way, paying at the counter. In Zephyr Hills, a jewelry store on Gold Boulevard got hit by a bunch of brazen thieves who decided to make their move just before 4 a.m. Picture this. Five individuals, all decked out in hoodies, storm into the family-owned business, and go straight for the display cases. Even though the Zephyr Hills police were on the scene, within 30 seconds of the call, these criminals were already gone, vanished into thin air. And guess what? Investigators think this might be connected to another incident about an hour later in Lakeland at Max Jewelers. It's certainly disturbing and, you know, we're going to do our best to try to put some people in jail. Luckily, at Max Jewelers, the owner had everything locked up tight, so the thieves didn't get away with much. It takes some serious nerve to pull off a heist like that, hitting not one, but two jewelry stores in one night. Let's hope the law catches up with these audacious crooks. On March 7th, 2023, two masked thieves in NYC pulled off a classic smash and grab. They smashed a display case and made a quick getaway with Hermes bags worth a whopping $242,000. I mean, a quarter of a million for just five bags? Talk about thieves stealing from thieves. A guy attempts to swipe six packs of beer but the vigilant workers catch him in the act, sparking a heated argument. In a surprising turn of events, the would-be thief starts hurling insults at the employees and even threatens to take legal action against them. Guess what? You won't work anywhere in America. Guess what? My wife is the biggest criminal defense attorney, and you won't even 
before I call Oh, that's very scary. So what is the problem? I can't pay for this. No, you're now I'm just su I'm suing your employer. I'm suing your mother. I want to sue your father. I swear to God. All right, so go ahead and walk out the door. I don't want to have to touch you, sir, but I'm going to have to ask you. Now you're going to physically hit me? I literally didn't touch you at all. So. We have so threaten many cameras. Me. You threatened me. That's good. So all the cameras, I want every camera. You're really doing a good job. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you get tattoos on your Right. Here you go. Right. Why don't you leave and come for the house? Let's see. Okay. Right. 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 He is an the audacity of this guy is truly out of this world. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.